Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 230. Got another two-day session here. Uh, I'm actually quite enjoying doing these two-day sessions because it just means that in one of the sessions, I can just do all the accessory work that it's very hard to keep on top of, but also does a really, really good job of keeping you fit, keeping you healthy, sort of very isolated bodybuilding movements or just movements that aren't the high stimulus, explosive, full body compound movements, you know, like a snatch, like a sprint, any kind of jumping, all of the accessories that will help to improve those things I'm able to, to work on. So for example, the two down, one up uh, hamstring curl, that's a very, very important accessory to do for sprinting. Also for just any kind of jumping or explosive work. Reverse hyper is fantastic for keeping your lower back healthy. And uh, when, when I do those, I just, I can't believe how much I'm able to uh, get up, up a lower back pump and to make my lower back feel amazing. Also hip flexor training, uh, what you saw earlier also, some rotator cuff training. So all of these things there, they don't necessarily, I mean, you can get them all into one session, don't get me wrong. But um, if, you have the, if you have the ability to do two sessions in one day, um, then it, it does make sense because you can then get more and more of all these things into one session, into one day, sorry. And then you can get all of the, the sort of niggling injuries that you may have, you can get those sorted out and you can get them fixed. I also did some leg extension training, but um, I, sometimes I just don't even bother recording it because I more or less do it every single day anyway to help my quad tendon heal. Uh, I've started to introduce more leg extension isotonics, so slow controlled movements, just to get more and more blood flow and to progress the isometrics. So when it comes to knee pain, tendon pain, you want to start with isometrics to help to reduce the pain. And then once you're able, and pretty much as soon as you're able, like the pain is below like a three out of 10 on average, then you can start to introduce those isotonics. And uh, for me, my knee pain isn't always a three out of 10, but it is consistently getting lower. Uh, and what I've also noticed is that my quads are pretty weak in general. So that should also help with leg drive. And it will mean that I'm able to start increasing the volume on the squats because every time I was doing volume on squats before, uh, since this knee tendon flare up has happened, um, every time I did a set of Arsacross back squats or front squats, uh, the, the, knee, the, the quad tendon would flare up and it wouldn't be for a few days that it would improve. Uh, so the leg extensions have definitely helped a lot. Anyway, getting into the actual sort of main workout of the day, I did some snatches and for the warm up on the snatches, I decided that I was gonna do a muscle snatch and then a, uh, a no contact uh, snatch. So the reason I was doing this is to focus on actually pulling with my upper body and then also pulling under the bar consciously in a more smooth way. So what I would find after contact, I would kind of just rely on falling under the bar rather than actually physically using my body to pull underneath the bar actively. And I must say, when I was doing the sets, I would do the same weight. So I would do like, for example, 50 kilos of two muscle snatch and then, not muscle, yeah, muscle snatch, two muscle snatch and then two uh, no contact snatch. I found that the snatch right after that felt really, really good. So here what you're seeing is a double with 80 kilos, which is pretty much equaling my PR. So that's pretty good and the form is nice. Then I decided I was gonna jump up to 85. First rep went pretty well. And then I missed the second rep, but it felt like I could have easily made this. It was literally just like a lockout thing. So I went back on the next set and did it. And this right here you're watching is a body weight 2RM PR snatch. So that is really good for me. Really, really pleased to see that. Um, and it's kind of interesting to see that I'm able to do this even without actually increasing my squat strength that much. If anything, I'm actually weaker in squatting than I was at um, the start of the year, a couple months back. Um, so it just means that technically my weightlifting movements have improved. Now the clean and jerk, that's a different story. Um, power clean and jerk wasn't feeling particularly good today. Um, but the jerks are definitely feeling a lot better. I feel like they're a lot more solid and I'm catching them a lot more solidly. They are getting more consistent, so it will be interesting once my knee's feeling a lot better to start doing some more clean and jerks because it's that eccentric or that yielding when you're catching the bar and then dropping into the bottom of the squat quite fast in the clean and then trying to have that stretch shortening cycle, especially on the quads. I'm not sure that my quad tendon is going to be able to tolerate much volume or intensity in that uh, at the moment. So what you're seeing here is the top set of 100 kilos of power clean and jerk, one plus two. Uh, they felt pretty good um, on the jerks. The power cleans, I mean, it's 100 kilos. It's not that heavy for me. It will be interesting to see how heavy I'll be able to do this at the end of this training cycle. 
maybe getting up to 110 for power clean and jerk one plus two that'd be really cool because then that would also uh, uh, indicate that i've made some improvement not only in my technique but also in my overhead strength with all the handstand training that i've been doing so lastly the thing that i decided to do was some barefoot very very sort of light but tempo front squats i mean they initially started out as tempo front squats but then as the set went on i just what did whatever i could to get the reps to get the reps done um, the reason I was doing this is to try and prevent as much pronation as possible on my right foot. Um, and you can actually see here from this angle, there is still a little slight arch, but for some reason, when I wear the weightlifting shoes that I have, um, the arch just completely collapses. And I think it's something to do with the narrow narrowness of the toe box of the weightlifting shoe, potentially. Maybe I'm overthinking it, I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> I was getting some weird looks for doing um, barefoot front squats in the weightlifting area, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to improve. So what you're seeing here is three sets of eight with 90 kilos, uh, focusing on a slow and controlled eccentric tempo, trying to minimize that stretch shortening cycle in the bottom and uh, trying to stay as upright as possible with the torso or as upright as I possibly can considering you know, how long my femurs are. And these were really, really hard. Um, considering that my max front squat is 140 or maybe not currently 140, but you know, earlier on this year it was 140. Uh, just doing eight reps of 90 barefoot was really quite difficult. And towards the end of these reps, I was really, really struggling. Towards the end of these sets, sorry, I was really struggling. Um, which just goes to show that, you know, I have lost quite a bit of leg strength. And when you do have an injury, your body, your your nervous system does um, reciprocally, reciprocally inhibit the muscles that are attached to that tendon, or to, attached to that injury. When it knows there's an injury, it will limit the amount of force that can go through that part of your body. And so therefore, this is probably why my front squat is feeling looking uh, so weak at the moment, considering how strong it was, how strong I have been in the past. So, um, but this is a part of the process, slow isotonics, um, doing squats, making sure you're getting really, really good high quality form is part of the process for recovery. All right, that is pretty much it for today's workout, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.